Uh, the title of the talk is Big Phone, Little Hands. So everyone, uh, it's gonna be given, the presentation is going to be given by David Reedy. Uh, so please give him a hand. There's your pun. Thanks. Um, I'll get started. You always need inspiration for a talk like this. And of course, I'm taking my inspiration from, by his own admission, the greatest president this, company, this country has ever had. Um, everybody knows the jokes about his hands. In our case, this actually became a problem that we have users with our software that have small hands and a number of other um, needs as well. The problem that we have with our software, our software is for use in aged care situations by carers. So often they're working with a, an, aged care, an aged care resident or a, a person who may or may not have full faculties when they're working with them. So often our software is used in very constrained situations. And for it to be useful, it has to be quick and efficient. These are people, if you've ever worked in aged care or know anyone who does know these people are underpaid and overworked. Um, they don't have a lot of spare time, so anything they do has to be done quickly, has to be done efficiently. Um, so in the case of our software, if it's not really efficient, it's completely useless. It just won't get used. So this is the, the situation we found ourselves in. Because of the situation, often a carer will have an old person or a, a disabled person or whoever is in their care on one arm. They have only one hand free to do any work. At the moment, uh, at least in Australia, 80% of aged care workers are female. So most of our users for at least part of our software are women. And of course, women have smaller hands as well. Um, and of course, most people have a dominant hand. They have one hand they prefer. Uh, but for our software, is that hand going to be the one that's holding the old person and they're going to be using the phone in their off hand or the other way around? They're using the phone in their good hand and the other hand to support a patient. I came up with a term, it's called policialization, and it means making your software thumbable. Um, if you want to know why it's called that, uh, high school education in the 70s in, in Australia meant you did six years of Latin. Uh, so I did six years of Latin, and polique is just Latin for thumb. So policialization. Um, when I'm designing software, when we're designing software, we put it after accessibility. The first thing is make sure you your software is accessible to people. Step two, make it thumbable, make it work with one hand. So here's the dimensions of the iPhones. If we were talking Android, it's fairly similar. Uh, phones have been progressively getting bigger, um, almost doubled in size in most cases. For men, um, a comfortable reach with a thumb is 70 millimetres. For women, it's about 10% less than that. So it's about two and a half inches. So as you can see, if you look at a, a 10S Max down there, its width is pretty much the maximum width a, a man with a, a, a hand can, can get across. And certainly, it's becoming out of reach um, easily for, for women. So in 11 years, phones have doubled in sizes. But in 11 years, fingers haven't. So yeah, these are changing terribly quickly. Oh, any data in this is fake. Um, the photo, that's uh, my nephew-in-law's grandfather, uh, George. Um, so the data you'll see there is, is fake. You're not seeing anything real. Um, in fact, it was George, the situation George's wife found herself, or the family found themselves in when she was in aged care that is one of the things that led to the development of our software. Um, one of the really simple things I did to begin with was just to duplicate the back button. Um, I mean, the top left-hand corner is not the best place for a back button, um, but human interface guidelines say it's meant to be there, so we just duplicated it. It's still where it should be, put an extra one down the bottom. And of course, it's the same code, it's no extra work, it's just put a, a button in there. It's much bigger than it looks, right? It's basically a standard button, so it's almost the same size as that reference button just with a clear background, um, because we have dark and light themes for our software. Um, so we talk about the usable area. That's the usable area of a 10s Max. It's basically the, the bottom quarter is, is what you've got to work with comfortably. Now, by comfortably, I mean you know, hold the phone 
securely because these are phones that are being used in a work situation. You're working with an old person. You don't want to be throwing the phone around. So we define that as being, you know, where can you get to comfortably and still, you know, you're not going to drop your phone. Um, and the idea is, of course, put your commonly used stuff in the thumbable area. Things which are used less or things which are never going to be used with one hand. For example, you would probably not find yourself editing a resident's details you know, while you've got them on one arm. It's something you'd probably do later on. So things which don't need to be thumbable can go anywhere on the screen. So you're not restricting yourself in that way. Um, so we can do better. We analyze the use. This is our, the main screen that most carers would be using more than any other screen in the app. Um, and the main four buttons are those four there, the meals, activities, visitors, and medical. So they're in the, the most usable position down the bottom there. Um, the bottom two buttons we still put below because we want to still go for a top to bottom flow. But in fact, most users don't even see that unless they're an admin user, those two buttons don't even appear. But there's still you know, somewhere to get to if you need to. But is it really better? I mean, there it is with the, with the overlay. As you can see, that's pretty easy to get to if you're holding it with your, with your right hand. Of course, um, if you're holding it with your left hand, it's not a particularly good solution. Uh, in fact, I would say that is probably worse than if the buttons were just placed randomly, because then you have a 50-50 chance of them being somewhere useful. This is terrible. Um, so what do we do about it? We need to know something. And basically, we need to know the user's dominant hand. Um, I always put none into these things, just in case. Um, but basically, people are going to have a left or a right hand dominance. Some people don't, but yeah, they're lucky. And if you've got to choose a default, obviously, um, you choose right, because 80% of people are right-handed. So this is better. There it is arranged for a left-hand user, um, as you can see. Same as a right-hand user, other way around, really easy for them to use. Now, absolutely horrible, of course, for a right-hand user. So we have a selection in settings. Yeah, are you right-hand dominant or left-hand dominant? You can choose, it will, it will use it. Um, but what happens if the user wants to swap hands? Uh, I, um, I found when I was programming, I would always pick the phone up with my right hand because it was on the right-hand side of my keyboard. Uh, so it took me a little while to realize that, hang on, um, you know, I might not always pick it up the same way. And as soon as I tried to use it in reality, that is exactly what happened. So the question we had, and this is, I'm still classifying this as we're still user, user testing with this. At least I hope we are, because that's what they're meant to be doing while I'm here. Um, will the users need to swap hands? The answer there is yes. Right. I, I found that myself, that, that very quickly, you don't always book, pick your phone up the same way. Um, but how do we do this without adding a button to every screen? I mean, I don't want to have to put a, and what's more, it would have to be a fairly big button so you can get to it with either thumb if you were you know, working on the phone. So we have shake to swap. You shake the phone, it swaps. Um, the problem is, of course, as Apple has found out, shake is hard to discover. We have the advantage that the users, that at least the, the carer users of our app, will be trained in the use of the app because it does lots of medical things as well. So we sort of get around that, that we will show people explicitly when they first start using the software that they can shake to change hands. Um, and when I, I gave this talk once before, when I did, it was still a rumor that Apple would be changing the undo gesture, at least on iPads, and they have. So I, I think we're free to use to use our shape gestures. Um, and as I said, we're user testing this at the moment, and it will need user testing. I mean, I'm guessing, um, yeah, I don't have to deal with you know, caring for people every day. We're going to give this to some people that do and see how they feel about it. Fingers crossed. Um, it's really simple. This is the only bit of code. I took all the other code out, but I'll tell you how you can get it. Um, Basically, there's the you know, detect the shake, and all we do is change that, which is the dominant hand, and then redraw the screen. Here's a coordinator. Um, so, check your use cases. Do people need to use your phone or use your application with one hand in the real world? 
Um, look at your UI, see if you can make it sort of, you know, work out what's primary, what's secondary. Um, and then think about making it thumbable. And then, of course, get into people's hands, both hands, left and right, and, uh, and get them to use it. If you need to contact me, there's the details. If you'd like the code that sits behind this, that top link will take you to um, the blog where there's a, uh, a PDF of the extended version of this talk with all the code samples and everything else. Um, I'll apologise for the crappy website it's on at the moment. Uh, that's another job that's meant to be getting done while I'm over here, but it's still under construction. Thank you, David. So it's good. Good thing for all of us to consider when building our apps. <laughs>